I saw hands for that. That's a fire up for her right there. I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I, I just want you to think about something. We we could be in the last days, but we are in the last days. Because the last days and all the days after his resurrection and his coming, his second coming. So we're in the last moments. We see the signs of it. But you know what I want you to do is stay the course. And you know, to stay the course is not just your responsibility. You know, we have a Father in heaven who takes care of us. And he wants you to be built up in him. Now, our message today is be built up. Build me up, Lord. Build me up. Now, you see, when you get built up, you don't have to worry if you're going to miss the opportunity to be to heaven. You just stay built up. Hallelujah. Don't go off into the sunset looking for God in all the wrong places. Don't get yourself when you stumble and fall. Remember his grace. Get back up and get back in the race. And I want you to know the most important thing you can do is don't miss the mark of heaven. You're on a journey. Remember last week? We're in a race, Father. We thank you that we're going to make it in. You see, this whole world that you're living in, you got trouble, but God guarantees that you will overcome your trouble. Come on, sir. Okay? So he, he's marching you up the stairs, you know? Uh, going up a ladder, it, it gets a little harder as you get further up sometimes, huh? But the good news is that God's going to bring you all the way up to Him. But I want you to think about how you're not going to run out of gas, that you're not going to get tired of doing good, tired of all these old battles that you've been going through. What I want you to do is keep building yourself up. Come on, building sir. yourself up. You know, I liken this to a car. It runs on gas. Mine's almost on E right now. <laughs> what you got to do if you don't want it to stop? Put some gas in it. Yes, sir. Well, you know, today I want you to know there are things out there that will flatten your tire. Yes, there are people out there yes, no. that mean you're no good. Yes. And sometimes they creep in innocent little churches and big churches just like ours. It mean no good. Today, I want you to know all you got to do is stay built up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, don't you sit here and worry about every devil under every rock. You just stay built up. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to think about it as we read this whole book of the Bible. Turn to Jude. Amen, amen. Now, if you get tired of reading, Joanna will take over for you. <laughs> Trust me, she will. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So while you turn it there, I want you to read it with me if you can. And it's long, but I guess I'm going to tell you what. Yep, yep you're going to have to read it all. <clears throat> Verse 1, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, y'all reading? I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who changed the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ as our only sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains, but judgment unto the great day. In a similar way, Solomon and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns have themselves gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand, and what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals, these are the very things they destroy, that destroy them. 
Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea foaming up their shame. Wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands of, upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, Remember what the apostle of our, our, of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, In the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in the, your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God and Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. You read a whole book of the Bible. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Hallelujah. But I want you to see the most important thing in here. He said, you and I have got to be watchful these last days of people who creep into churches for no real good reason to serve Jesus, but are there for other purposes. I hope and I know that in our church, the whole goal is not man, religion, or structure, or tradition. What we're here for is Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to keep it like that until the day he calls me home, and I guarantee you who succeeds me will do the same. This church and any churches, most churches around here, I hope and pray, are in that kind of foundation. They're not going to be straying off into all kinds of false doctrine. But some are here who are in the era of Balaam. Some are here to teach just money. Some are here to teach all kinds of doctrine about things that don't even matter towards your faith. Things that have nothing to do with the walk you have. Teaching things of, of, of doctrines of this world and traditions. I want you to know, you're not going to be able to judge any of these people that's left up to God. And he's telling you now, he's already prepared a place for them already. Yes. A dark place. He made a slippery way for them. Yes, sir. So your focus, though, is on you. Building yourself up. Building yourself up. If you keep getting distracted by those kinds of people, you, you, and not build yourself up, you may slip yourself, kind of watching them. What I want you to do is stay strong and rooted and grounded in the word of God yourself. Do not forsake the fellowship of believers. Pray. Pray in all occasions. Pray in the spirit and pray with all your heart. And don't forget to read the Bible and stay in it. Hallelujah. Because that will build you up. You're not alone. You're in fellowship with other people. People who love God. Church is not a place you just come to today and then tomorrow you don't worry about how you live or what you do. God wants you to be rooted and grounded in his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I want to tell you, your job and my job is to stay built up in him. Yes. Uh, you know, when you're built up, you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're not afraid to fellowship and come to church. When you're built up, you're motivated to be in church. You desire to be with other believers. You're hungry for the word. And when there's worship, your heart is with it. Come on, sir. Because you've been built up. Come on, sir. 
in these last days, we don't have to look for who, who is saying what about being chosen or anything else. We have to be built up ourselves. The one thing I want you to know, God will take care of you if you stay focused on Him. Hallelujah. All these vain arguments about what about this and that and the times and all these people teaching this and teaching that. That's okay if you want to listen to it, but keep, keep yourself built up. You have no fear because perfect love casts out all fear. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you sin, remember his grace is there for you. Get yourself back up. Strengthen yourself in the word. Yes, sir. And run this race. Yes, yes sir. And keep going. Build yourself up again. Don't stay down. Say, don't stay down. Don't stay, down. Don't stay, discouraged. Don't stay discouraged. Let me say you something. You bit back up. If you got to call a friend or come to church or whatever you got to do, call your mama, call your somebody, and you pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray and build yourself up because if you stay down, ain't nobody there to pick you up. There's someone who will drag you out. And you don't want him to do that. So you have an obligation not only to your church but to yourself. To stay built up. Yes. Because if you sit here and worry about what all of them are doing, you're going to be one confused person. I was listening to a show, you know, I'm, I was raised Catholic, so I was listening to it. Every now and then I go back to a Catholic channel, y'all. Make sign across for me. <laughs> but I, I listen to people and I try to see, okay, I want to make sure that my word is sharp. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to listen to other people to make sure. Okay, this is the way I know to do it. And I was listening to that, and I wish I hadn't. And I even told Janelle, and she was looking at me like, I wish you never told me that. <laughs> but I was listening to that, and I heard him say, you know, something. A lady called in, and she said, you know, I have a gift of healing. And I touch people, and they get healed. I think in the last days, they were talking about the last days. In the last days, I think it is a good thing to demonstrate that God is really still here by doing these things. Well, that man blasted that woman sitting there. <laughs> he said, no, unless the church approves your healing, unless the church says it is a real healing, it ain't no healing. Because the devil can do the same thing. That's what he told her. And when they got back on the phone to talk to the lady, I thank God for that. She had hung up and kept going by her business. Good for her. You know, the Lord gave me a word about that. That a lot of church have the truth, but some of them want to control it. My Lord. God wants his word to run freely, people. He wants all of you in the gifts. He wants all of us preaching his word. He wants all of us laying hands on the sick and they recover. He wants all of us to be able to pray and be strengthened. Hallelujah. You see, he wants his word, the scripture says it, to run freely. He don't want it under some man's or some organization's control. My, my, my. God wants to build you up to yes. use you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if he gifts you with anything, it's, it's not for you to brag about it. It's for you to bring forth his kingdom and save other souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But don't ever think he cannot use you without some organizational approval. He doesn't want us out in the wild blue yonder now. He don't want you speaking something other than what you have learned. He don't want you to create your own church and religion. He wants you to follow him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And stay faithful to the doctrine that you've been raised up on and been taught. Hallelujah. Don't stray to the left or to the right. But remember, God want to use you, so build yourself up in the Holy Ghost. Pray. Hallelujah. Remember, this letter is not written to the world. This letter is written, if you go back up in the first part of Jude, this letter is written to those who have been called. Now, if you notice, it's those who have been called. That doesn't mean it's, 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 it's specific people. Those who have been called are called by God. They're not called by man. They're not called by religion. Come on, sir. Those who have been called, who are loved by who? God. God. The Father and kept who keeps you? Jesus Christ. Does your religion keep you? Jesus. If your religion keeps you, you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. Jesus keeps you. Hallelujah. 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 And he prays for young for you to have mercy, peace.
peace and love yes. in abundance. Yes. See, on this journey, when you build yourself up, God's mercy is there for you. Yes. He will always love you. Yes. That devil will tell you, oh, look what you did. God don't love you no more. And that's somebody who don't know God. Yeah. Satan definitely don't know him. And if he, people say you know him, but he'll tell you a lie, fresh out of hell then. Because God's going to always love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, he, he wants you to have peace and, and love. And he wants you to have all these things in abundance. So he's telling you how to keep the faith. Don't, 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 don't go around ungodly men teaching ungodly things. If I stand here and preach another gospel other than what you know, do you see that door right there? You run out of this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, say, I sure am going to run. <laughs> you know, I just want to tell you, keep yourself built up because if you turn on that TV and somebody says something, that disturbed me for a couple of days. Because I, I really thought that church would never say anything like that. But I was raised up. As one man, but still, you know, we have too many examples in the Bible where God did mighty things for people and they went out and did mighty things also. Yes, sir. It wasn't reserved to just a few. That's right. God sent 70 people out. 70. It wasn't just the 12 apostles with the anointing to heal the sick and to deliver those who are oppressed by the devil. He wanted a whole bunch of people going out. Hallelujah. Yeah. He wants to build you up so you can be an example of the faith. So you can snatch some out of the fire. Yeah. So you can snatch them out. You think those priests and all those people can snatch everybody in your life out of the fire? Maybe he put you there to do it. Come on, so son. I want you to be strong in the Lord. Say, I need to be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen, I want you to go with me to Colossians chapter 2. Oh boy. Look, it's very important to teach this message occasionally because I, I, all of us got those TVs for sure. And all of us hear rumors about this and that, about this and that. You know, I don't want you to worry about the rumors. I want you to focus on your own strength in God. Hallelujah. God's going to build you up. Say, God's going to build me up. God's going to build me up. Hallelujah. So I keep my focus on Him. The Bible says He'll keep you in perfect peace. Whose eyes are stayed on him. Hallelujah. <coughs> Glory to God. Listen, in, in Colossians chapter 2, we'll begin reading at verse 6. So then, just as you received Jesus, y'all there, as Lord, continue to what? Live in him. Who are you supposed to live in? Who are you supposed to live in? Is that a man or is that God? Live in Him. Have your being in Him. Hallelujah. You know who you follow? Your religion? Your pastor? Or Jesus? You got a lot of choice questions. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Say Jesus. Jesus. There you go. Hallelujah. You can say you're sure. That's okay with me too. I know His name. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what I want you to remember today as you think about him. Hallelujah. That you should live in him. Rooted, say rooted. Rooted. And built up in him. Strengthened in the faith as you were taught. And overflowing with faithfulness. Who brought you this far? Who made you overcome all those things that could have taken you down? Whether it was grief or sickness or financial problems. Who made you overcome? Trust me, God was with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. We owe him thanksgiving and praise. Yeah. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Now, I was raised to believe that tradition was as important as scripture. But this verse clearly says, let me tell you something which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world. God doesn't want your faith to be based on the principles of this world That's right. rather than on Christ. Come on, teach, Hallelujah. 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 Do you know that? Yes. Can y'all understand that? Yes. Yes. 
Yeah, your traditions, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, you don't have any, any people walking around with the fans and the white dresses on in your church. You know, I'm used to that. Well, that's your tradition. We don't have no tradition. Come on, sir. I'm not used to the pastor not sitting up there, him and his wife in the kingly chairs. That's your tradition. But that's not our tradition. Come on, sir. I'm not looking for a phrase team that just seems to just get into the word. They're not sounding like a, a big old choir that's from, No, that's your tradition. This is who we are. Yes, sir. You see, sometimes you throw your tradition out just to get more of Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was used to a whole lot of stuff. But I want Jesus first. Yes, sir. My traditions don't matter no more. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even my mom, who's Catholic Catholic, is, is 84, almost 85 years old. She understands that something changed in her boys because they're not anymore. Yes, sir. But they love God even more. Yes, sir. And they live for him for real. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're not just going to church and dipping their hands in the holy water, <laughs> genuflecting. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> no, they're living in Christ. Yes. Yes. Is that the most important thing? Yes. yes, sir. Though she's Catholic, she sees that's the most important thing. Yes. And because she's Catholic, I'm okay with that too. Because the most important thing are you living in Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. This is, this is very important because some of us just can't live without our traditions. We just can't. But God's telling you the most important thing is not human tradition, but the, the basic principles of this world. How to make money. How to make more. How to make even more. How to buy a new car. No, he wants you to live in Christ. It's about him, people. It's about him and him crucified. Yes. It's about his resurrection and his power. Yes. It's about his coming again in glory. Yes. Come on, sir. It's all been about him the whole time. Yes. Everything that was made was made through him for him and for his glory. Yes, sir. Yes. That's all you need to worry about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, look, if you got your mind on your traditions, you need to watch out. The Pharisees were traditional people. Very traditional. And when Christ came, the same Christ who was among them are called just like them as a Jewish person, a Hebrew. They didn't even recognize who he was. But fishermen out in the field, one rabbi who sneaked out at night, who decided he was going to come and see how he can be changed. And Jesus told him, you must be born again. But even the traditional people, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, didn't even know who he was. In fact, they persecuted the Christ himself. But yet they knew the law. But they couldn't see who he was. Today I want to tell you some good news. All you got to do is stay fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. All you got to do is stay fixed on Him. And I want you to know that you just stay with the basic doctrines you have learned of baptism, of being born again, of being washed in the blood. Hallelujah. You stick to the basics. When somebody comes along and they got a new doctrine, and you say, well, how long have been around? Because my doctrine goes 2,000 years. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To Calvary. Yes. And if you got another doctrine that you got 600 years ago, or you got one 100 years ago, or you got one last week. Because <laughs> they're coming out of the woodwork. My, my, my. They're coming from all over with their doctrine. Yes, sir. Some other way. Some other learning that you need to learn. Let me tell you, forever learning or never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Today I want to give you good news. You know the truth. Yes, sir. And that truth will set you free. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 That's the truth that you need. And you can get it from any church you've been in. But you just keep running with the truth and leave your traditions behind. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody in here grew up in a tradition. Every last one of us. You wouldn't be in this church if you were a traditional person. You wouldn't even visit this church if that's what you were about. I don't even have an altar in here. But don't you forget communion. Don't you forget the laying on of hands. 
Don't you forget the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the baptism in water. These are basic things that God ordained yes, for you to know. Right. Hallelujah. It's not a tradition of man. This is God's. Hallelujah. Okay. Look, y'all bear with me for just a second. I want you to go with me to uh, Colossians 1. Oh boy. Colossians chapter 1. Amen. Amen. You know, if I ever thought I was preaching anything that would lead anybody astray, I wouldn't sleep at night. I'd be ready to go home. I really would. I tell my closest friends, if you don't understand or you don't believe what, uh, what you read, believe my testimony. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you love me, just believe what I say. Because I, 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 I don't get paid and I don't want to get paid. I'm thankful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you look at verse 9, for this reason, since the day we heard, y'all there? Yes. Yeah. About you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the knowledge of who? God. God. Being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the, of the Son he loves, in whom we have what? Redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Do you see that? Growing in the knowledge of what? God. You should be growing in the knowledge of him every single day. Hallelujah. And being strengthened with all power from where? according to his glorious might. Not worldly might, God's might. See, have you ever had to draw strength from the Holy Ghost? You ever been in, I know some of you, have you been in a situation where you were greatly grieved about someone who had passed on or something? And your friends come to you and they all say, oh, you know, I just want you to uh, understand that, you know, we love you and we there for you. And you say, thank you. And that don't help you none. And then somebody else come along and give you a nice car, show you a set of nice flowers, and you say, that's nice, thank you so much. Thanks for coming, thank you. Then you go home and you're all alone, and you're so grieved, you don't even know where you're gonna get your strength from. People can't give it to you. All of a sudden you start drawing on the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on, teacher. You start going to scriptures, you remember as a child, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, I sir. shall not walk. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You start going to things that get into the word, and then all of a sudden, you, you say, in my father's house there's many mansions. And then you begin to feel the peace of God touching you. Hallelujah. And you say, that's what I need. That's what I needed. Come on, sir. That's my strength. Come on, sir. My strength comes from God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes somebody will bring you the right words or put a card that got the right scripture in it. But you're looking for God for your strength. Yes. Hallelujah. Today, keep building yourself up. Keep building yourself up. People are teaching all kinds of things. You know, I never get tired of the pure word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have nothing else to teach you. I would love to teach you how to make money. But I obviously don't have none, so I don't know how to tell you how to make money. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I mean, and I sure don't want to make it off of your hard work and go give me things and tell people, look what all I got. Well, you got it from the poor people that gave it to you in your church. Amen. My Lord. Now, you know I'm really feeling bad today. <laughs> But I got some good news for you. Come on, sir. You know, you keep the faith. Build yourself up. Stay in the basic teachings. Go with me one more verse. And I got three more, but let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Amen, amen. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Did you know, you don't have to know, I just told my wife this morning, as many times I've read scriptures and read the Bible, I, I always get something new. I never, you know, I can read a book, 
I read a book called The Racial Graph years ago. I can still remember what that book is all about. All these years, I was in high school. But the Bible, <laughs> I, I just can't remember everything in here. I got to stay in it every day, read it every day, pray over it every day in order for me to be sustained by it. My Lord. You may be a brilliant person. I can remember certain scriptures, but the Bible is so edifying in so many levels and layers, I can never get it all. My, my, my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just can't eat it all. You know, I'm used to eating everything you put on my plate. <laughs> <laughs> if you put it on my plate, me and Matthew, we're going to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Jesus said, you sure will. <laughs> you see, but the Bible, I get up in the morning, I open it, and I read it, and it's new every morning. My Lord. Who is that that say they know the whole word? Good luck with you. <laughs> every message I give to you, I'm up hours studying. My wife will tell you, shut up. Closed up. Sometimes she come in there, been up all night, and she look at me and I'm nodding off in the sleep. I can never get enough. And I can never say I have it all. My, my, my. Give us Lord our daily bread. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even dear, she been in church all of her life. <laughs> her mama made her stay in church for hours. And she tells me all the time, it's always new. I never got it all. Amen, amen. She's 90 years old, people. Amen, amen. Today, I want to tell you, let it be new every morning. Let it come off the pages to you. Trust him that he, he knows what to give you when you need it. I want you to learn how to be built up in him, not in doctrine. But in him. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. If you go with me to Hebrews, I tell you about Hebrews yes. chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. You say, Pastor, say, watch out for people. And I say, no, build yourself up. Yes. If you're going to be watching for all these people, <laughs> uh, that's just too many of them out there for one thing. So you need to just build yourself up. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some information for Bible Hebrew chapter 6. Oh. Nobody cheat. <laughs> I heard that. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. Well, let's start with verse 1. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go to maturity, not laying again the foundation yes, yes. of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Instruction about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and external and eternal judgment. And God permitted, we will do so. It is possible for those, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, say once been enlightened, once been enlightened. who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance. Because to their loss, they're crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. You ever hear that? Yes. It's saying, you already been enlightened. And you already born again. You already tasted of the Spirit. Don't go back and start all over again with something else. And then come back to God and say, I repent. You see what I'm saying? You've already tasted of his goodness. He's already kept you strong. He's kept your children on the right track. He's answered your prayers. You have felt his presence in church. You feel the spirit in you moving. And then you go off into some other teaching, into some other thing. There is no more repentance for you. If that not fear of God, what is? Don't you go off into another thing. Keep the basic doctrines of Christ. Hallelujah. 
please listen to me, people. I've been exposed to a lot. You sure have to. The Jehovah Witnesses are knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you all kinds of things. And then you get there and you start reading a little bit and your heart will say, no, 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 I don't think so. You're nice to them. Lucinda is not nice to them. But most of y'all are nice to them. She opened the door and tell them, so now you know not to come to this house. <laughs> That's what she tells them. 